Welcome to the Horror Hotel. Today we're going to talk about the 90s. During the 90s, the horror movie genre almost died out. It was a really bad decade in the case that almost every movie was a sequel to a 70s or 80s movie. And most other movies that were released were only direct-to-video, which kind of made it impossible for uh, horror movies to get actual budget. That was until Kevin Williamson presented a script called The Scary Movie. And he got it funded quite right away because the script was interesting and it was new and it was not a sequel to an old horror franchise. Uh, hooking up with some people uh, as Wes Craven to direct the movie, we soon saw the result that was Scream. And I really liked the movie because it revitalized the horror genre and the slasher genre in the same turn. It basically uh, combine uh, comedy and horror uh, in a very effective way and why Scream is so good well you know you have a lot of friends that uh, are around you and uh, you like them all and you hang out and doing stuff that's what Scream is about one of those fuckers you hang out with is the killer and you don't know who it is and you don't know why he's doing it and th that is basically what is scary with this movie. This is not an elite killer. Ghostface is not a professional murderer like Jason or Freddy Krueger out to hunt teens. They are actually shown during the movie that they are pretty clumsy. I mean, <laughs> falling on the couch? Come on. But that is what I like with this movie. And I know a lot of people critique the movie for having this comedy set in it but i don't think that's a bad thing i actually think that's a good thing um considering uh who the murder were and why they were murdering it was kind of a good uh, input to get in there to make sure that the murder was never that professional i mean anyone can kill with a knife that, that's not the hard part but the hard part is being uh, being as professional as uh, as in other movies you know how they they always one hit you they always find you they you know that kind of stuff but in scream there is a, there is actual chase scenes where the murderer is confused or the murderer trips and falls and he doesn't always find the victims immediately and I really like that kind of storytelling. It really brought something new to the slasher genre. This time it wasn't some kind of supernatural demon going after teens. But this time it was a regular guy from a high school with a knife that had seen a little bit too many horror movies. And I really like that. And if you take a look at it, you take a look at the numbers. The, the movie had a 15 million budget and box office raised 137 million dollars that's only because the horror genre was lacking so much and people really needed that good scare that we always need you know and and they did it really good because they decided that they weren't gonna go with uh sheep actors this time they were going with real um Real, real big name actors like we have uh, Neve Campbell, Courtney Cox, David Arquette, and Drew Barrymore in the mix. You know, so people were really looking forward to the movie when they heard about that. It was that's why the movie was such a huge success. Uh, the movie is not too gory or something like that, but it's kind of still violent. But they kept it on a level that is a little bit more uh, acceptable from the public. So, everyone lo loved this movie. And I love this movie uh, because uh, how it, how it uh, saved the horror genre during the 90s, which is a pretty dull fucking decade, if you, if you ask me. There is not much going on there, is it? No. Not my, what, Mimic? Yeah. Otherwise? Eh. The movie does revolve around the character Sidney Prescott, uh, acted by Neve Campbell and her friends. And Sidney is struggling with, with the fact that it is uh, this upcoming anniversary, so to speak, that kind of gruesome way to say it, uh, of the murder of her mother. 
But the movie doesn't really start there. Uh, it actually starting with Drew Barrymore's char uh, character, Casey Becker, receives a phone call uh, by some mysterious guy calling her and uh, asks her, what's your favorite scary movie? She then answers Halloween and then gets several questions uh, to answer. But for every wrong she does, um, something happens. Uh, it's actually her boyfriend gets gutted on the porch. And that's how the movie starts. And then we're cutting to Cindy, who is struggling with this. But she also receives a threatening phone call. And when she hangs up, the murder is after her. That is basically what we know in the beginning of the movie. And... Um, it really the, the the Drew Barrymore is really great because it really sets the mood for the movie right at the start, and then it chills down a bit. Um, but it's like you know what this is when you see it. You know, yes, this shit is real. And the first gore scene with him on the porch is is uh, amazingly done. The movie scream '90s. I mean, that it does, but. But looking at it today, uh, many years later, made me realize that, wow, it, it, it really has some good camera work in it. it. It got some really good direction. The writing is pretty solid, too, you know? I mean, it's pretty obvious it's got to be good. We got Kevin Williamson who wrote the movie. He also wrote uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer. Uh, he also wrote Dawson Creek, I think. And uh, he also wrote Vampire Diaries. And Wes Craven coming in directing the movie. He had directed, you know, uh, The Nightmare on Elm Street and The Hills of Eyes. Two really good movies you also should check out, of course, if you haven't. I don't know why you wouldn't have. The characters of the movie are really good as well. They're, they have strong characterizations, but no one is an obvious, super stereotypical one. Everyone is a little bit goofy and something, but they, they are all very fun to watch. Courtney Cox uh, character... Uh, Gail, the journalist, maybe the most punchable journalist in the movie world, but you know, she's, she does a really good acting job and she really fits in the movie with, with everything else. And, and this kind of thing uh, was really rare, or and still is in uh, some cases in horror movies. And I really, really enjoy the work they put into this movie, uh, which makes it really great. Ghostface, the killer of the movie, is, uh, wears a standard Halloween mask that is uh, inspired by the painting uh, The Scream by Edward Munch. And the story of the movie is uh, slightly based on the Gainesville Ripper, uh, the serial killer also known as Daniel Harold Rowling. He was killing people uh, during the time period of November 4th, 1989 to August 27, 1990 and was later sentenced to death in 2006 by lethal injection. I will leave a link in the description to uh, this case if you're interested in reading about it. And another kind of interesting fact is the movie, of course, did get a lot of sequels. Uh, mo most of them are written by Williamson, if I am correctly. But Scream 2... Uh, also has a movie within the movie called Stab, which is a movie based on the first screen movie that is using the same kill. It's kind of a filmception there, but it's a re really interesting uh, thing to do. And another thing I also thought about it while we're on the subject of movies in movies is that in this movie, people are aware of other movies. You know, it's not like in a zombie movie. People don't know what zombies are. But if they did the same setting as a Scream is in, they would realize pretty fucking quickly they, uh, they were zombies. Not, not like in The Walking Dead, they called them walkers. Because they, the Dawn of the Dead was never released in, um, in The Walking Dead universe. Uh, and th in this movie does it the other way around. Instead of, uh, in instead of you know, retelling it that, like this shit ever, uh, never was released they instead it like yeah of course it's like it's like halloween or it's like friday the 13th or something like that and uh, i got to say i'm uh, i like that kind of take it gives it gives a little bit more life to the characters and the environment and stuff like that it makes you feel more connected with the movie it makes it it makes you feel a little bit more unsafe because it feels a little bit more like reality itself and uh, that is just that is awesome 
That is fantastic. And if you haven't seen this movie, you go do that right now. Go buy it or go to Netflix or... No, Netflix doesn't have it. I don't know. Whatever you gotta do, go see this movie and uh, maybe see Scream 2 as well. That is uh, That movie is pretty good as well. After that, it kind of goes down pretty fast. So you don't, you don't have to spend time seeing 3 and 4. But you can, of course, do that if, if you want to. I mean, I'm not here to tell you not to. So go see this movie, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and please leave a comment if you agree or disagree with me. Uh, don't forget to follow my Twitter and my Twitch, and if you use Facebook, follow me on Facebook, too. Bye.